Hello, Sky of um, Tudica Bobbits, and in this video, I am going to be talking about Advanced Parallax. Now, I know my previous video was called Advanced Parallax, but this is going to be even more advanced. Right, so with Adobe Character Animator, the parallax you've got when you set it up as default is nose, eyes, eyebrows, mouth, and they slightly slide around the face. In my previous video, I explained how you can take those um, parallax feature, add it to other features like hair and jaw and ears, and also make them move around the face as well, and that gives your character more of a, a 2.5D effect. However, there's an even more advanced um, thing you can do, and that's using either cycle layers or layer picker layers. Now, if you look at Bunny over here, and if you pay attention to the ears, the hair, um, the whiskers, the jaw, even the back of the head. When I now this is currently set up on cycle layers, so when I turn my head, you see it triggers an animation that makes all of those move either way. Hang on. Now what that does, it gives the impression of the rabbit going from a frontal to a three quarter look. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could make it move even further across to a profile look. Now the benefit of this is that with Adobe, Adobe Character Animator, every time you want a head turn, um, you've got to build a whole new headset and that can cause the size of your character file to get bigger and bigger and bigger and then it can cause lagging issues. Whereas if you can build the turn into one you know, profile of your character, it's going to keep the size right down. And also, when you use the current um, Adobe Character Animator head turn thing, it's like there's a cut, you know, it's like front, three quarter, front, three quarter profile. And it's a bit snappy. It's not very fluid. Um, and for the 2.5D effect, which is almost giving a 2D cartoon a 3D effect, you don't want that cut. You don't want that break in animation. You want it to fluidly animate to them, you know, different positions. Now, as I said, this is using cycle layers. So what's happening here is that on those layers, so like, let's, for example, look at the ears. So we've got the ears and I've got that tagged as a face and then I've got added to it turner and that is head turner so if i want um so if we go here we got head and body turner and i've got that added to the top layer now in the um in the sub folders i've got my frontal so that a single layer and that's my frontal ears and then when i turn my head left or right it triggers off an animation that animates those ears turning and then it holds on that final position. So I've got that one tagged as right quarter and I've got that one tagged as left quarter. So when I'm turning my head and character animator is picking up me turning my head, it is trigger triggering the cycle animation. So if we click on there, you can see there is a cycle layer animation and we've got it holding on the last layer so that it holds that final frame and then we've got it on forward and reverse so that it animates in and then animates out and also importantly hide others group hide others in group when triggered so that it makes the frontal one disappear and I do the same thing for, you know, the hair, the ears, all the different layers that I want. If you had a, um, a person, a human character, you might want, and I've done this on others, you might want the nose to parallax, you know, to change perspective. Because, you know, look at me. I've got a big nose. And when it's straight, when it's to the side, it's very, it doesn't look the same as when it's from the front. So if I was, you know, doing an animation for that, I'd have it at the front. And then I would have it turn into its more beaky profile look. 
And that's okay, so that's one way of doing it. Is it the best way of doing it? Maybe not. Now, the reason is, it's a, you know, when you turn, it's far in that animation, so it's cycling from the first, you know, second, third, fourth frame, start to finish. You've got no control over how far you are cycling. It's literally, you turn your head, the hair's going like that, that way, that way. It's just triggering that animation. But what if I wanted to slowly move the hair and I wanted complete control over how I turn through it? There is a way of doing it, and that is with the layer picker. Um, you know what? I'll do another video for that. So this video is how to do advanced, um, advanced parallax with cycle layer behavior. And in my next video, I'll explain how you can do an even more advanced um, parallax, but with layer picker behavior. I'll be back soon.